Hey everybody, this is Joe. Thank you for watching my Giga Texas construction update video. For today's deep dive video, I want to talk more in depth about an exciting development that's happening at Giga Texas right now with construction of the Megapack system, also known as the battery electric storage system, just to the north of the factory. Now, recently got some new documents that were filed by the Public Utility Commission of Texas, and this details the agreement between LCRA, which is the Lower Colorado River Authority, and Tesla to install this new battery electric storage system at Giga Texas. Now, with this image here on the bottom left, this is a image directly from the files that you can access with the link at the bottom of the screen. It will also be in the video description if you want to get the original PDFs. But you can see with this map, this is the new permanent electrical substation or switch shard. And you can see next to it on the left hand side of the screen, the battery electric storage system or the mega pack installation site. So let's uh, get ready and dive more into the details and have a good discussion on what this entails. A special thank you to all of my outstanding Patreons for your continued encouragement and support. Patreon members get access to hundreds of high-resolution photos, previews of the future material, and direct dialogue with me. If you would like to support my channel, please consider becoming a patron using this link, which is also in the video description. Please also consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons as this helps as well. Thank you. So as I mentioned in the brief introduction to this video, today we'll be talking about the exciting developments and also the ongoing construction right now here at Giga Texas of the Megapack battery electric storage system. And to do so, I'll be using source documents that were filed by the Texas Public Utility Commission recently. And there are 64 pages, they're all in PDFs. So you can see the link at the bottom of the screen and in the video description if you'd like to see the original PDFs and get a lot more in-depth information. Now this is a public site, so it's easily accessible by anybody with this particular link. Now, what I want to do is use some of these source documents in this discussion, and we'll start with this one. This is the ERCOT Standard Generation Interconnection Agreement between LCRA and Tesla for Giga Texas Energy. And this again was filed with the Texas Public Utility Commission recently. Now, this second document gives a little bit more detail about the Megapack installation here at Giga Texas. First, we can see that the point of interconnection is the LCRA TSC. This is the Hornsby Power substation, which is located just to the south of Colorado River, and this is in Travis County, Texas. Now, the actual switch yard is the one that we've been watching under construction since about mid-2022, just to the north of Giga Texas. And uh, next to that is where the Megapack battery electric storage system will be installed. Now, the delivery voltage is 345 kilovolts. Uh, the maximum real power rating of the battery electric storage system is about 131 megawatts, and that's at the inverter with 480 volts AC. And there will be 68 Megapacks uh, installed, and they, each one has approximately two megawatts of capacity each. Now, for a few uh, definitions, you see TSP is Transmission Service Provider, TSC is Transmission Service Corporation, LCRA is the Lower Colorado River Authority, ERCOT is the Energy Reliability Commission or Council of Texas, and POI is the Point of Interconnection. And just to continue the uh, establishing of context, I'd like to just mention briefly ERCOT, that's the Energy Reliability Council of Texas, their responsibility is to manage the flow of Texas power supply across the entire state. And they have a website and you can go to that uh, and get additional information if you would like. The LCRA is the Lower Colorado River Authority. Their responsibilities cover energy, that would be generation and transmission, water, and community services such as parks and uh, uh, other services around the state of Texas. And both of these play a large role in the Megapack installation at Giga Texas. And the final portion of adding context to this discussion will start here. Uh, as you can see by the image on the top left, this is the new permanent electrical switch yard. And you can see the bottom right photo of how it looks today. 
This has been in construction since about mid-2022, and it's composed of three distinct bays. In addition to this, on the roof of Giga Texas itself, there's more than 70,000 solar panels that will eventually be installed. Right now, there's just over 30,000 of them installed. And when this is completed, it will give a capacity of over 30 megawatts of solar power. And this will be connected to the Megapack site. And you can see in the bottom right image, where this is located in relation to the main factory and the roof with the solar panels and also the new permanent electrical power station uh, to the left of that uh, construction site per the, the image that you see in the bottom right. Now, for the permanent electrical switchyard itself, I have gone in depth on that discussion and I did it on the 28th of December. I would recommend you take a look at that video if you'd like to have more information about the electrical switchyard and how it is going to be arranged and operate. But for today, we will uh, assume that you've looked at that and we'll go into the mega pack discussion. Now, referring back to the documents that were filed with the Texas Public Utility Commission, uh, again, we can see that the mega pack will have a delivery voltage of 345 kilovolts. It will have 68 distinct mega packs that will be installed in that construction site. Uh, that will give a total of approximately 136 megawatt capacity once it's installed. And we'll go into the numbers a little later in the video. This image here shows you that point of interconnection and some of the details about how that electrical switch shard and the battery electric storage system will physically be interconnected once the entire systems, both on the electrical switch shard and on the Megapack battery electric storage system site are completed. Now, if we look at the electrical switch shard using these two images, we can see how it's generally arranged and how it has been constructed. There's three main bays. You can see the purple and green ones. Those are the bays that are generally attached to the 345 kilovolt existing grid system. The yellow area is bay three, and this is what's associated with the mega pack. And that is what we will be paying our attention to throughout the rest of this discussion. Now, this side of the electrical switch yard is nearly completed. It was the last of the construction to be completed on that electrical switch yard. But now, as you can see by the bottom part of the right-hand side image, the battery electric storage system or mega pack site is now seeing that construction. And we've been seeing trenching, some conduit installation, and also conduit that reaches back to the main factory. Now, how a mega pack is generally organized is what I'm trying to show by this particular image. And this is derived directly from the tesla.com site where they talk about typical mega pack installations uh, that they have done up to this point. And I believe it's representative of what we'll see here at Giga Texas. Now the typical uh, AC terminal voltage is 480 volts. You can see that inverters are supplied with 12 power stages for each mega pack. And that's about 71.5 kilovolts uh, per power stage. And I would expect to see the site for the Megapack itself generally organized in this particular manner as construction continues. Now I got these two images that we'll be discussing from the Tesla.com Megapack site as well. And I just wanted to go over that in case uh, you weren't completely familiar with what Megapacks are. Now you can see that each unit is fully assembled and tested. It says here at Tesla Gigafactory, but it's now the Lathrop uh, Megapack uh, construction site over in California, and they ship ready to install. They have thermal systems, battery module bays, AC connectors and breakers, inverter bays, IP66 enclosures, and a thermal roof. And what the mega packs do is that they're basically a demand response program and they minimize revenues by using storage as an asset to help decongest the grid. And you see the grid operator, this is generate revenue and participating in the demand response program. You have the demand response service provider, which is uh, support of the integration of solar on the grid. And then the commercial or industrial site, which is 
uh, benefits by the improved grid stability. Now this also helps to replace peaker plants. Peaker plants are generally fossil fueled plants that come online as demand changes and the Megapack system helps avoid using those fossil peaker plants and instead provides a better grid stabilization force and also uh, uses solar energy with the batteries to do so. This is a short video clip showing how a Megapack system construction site looks and progresses. I would expect to see something very similar here at Giga Texas develop as the site continues to see its construction. Now you may be wondering, is this the first Megapack installed in the state of Texas? And the answer is no. There was actually another one that was installed in Angleton, Texas last year. And this article on the left from Drive Tesla Canada goes into a lot of the details about that particular installation. And you can see the link at the bottom of the screen. It will be in the video description if you would like to access that article. The image on the right is from Tesla.com. And this shows you a bird's eye view of that particular installation of the 81 unit or 100 megawatt system and it was based on the original mega packs and that'll be very interesting and important for us to go through here shortly when we talk about the installation at Giga Texas. You can see with this inset map it gives you an idea of where this is uh, located. It's actually near the Gulf of Mexico just to the south of Houston. It's probably about a two to two and a half hour drive to the southeast from Giga, Texas. So let's look at a few of the specification. I already mentioned that there's 81 Tesla mega packs. They are the original mega packs and it's rated at about 1.25 megawatts per mega pack. So that's about a 100 megawatts capacity or about 200 megawatt hours of power consumption capability. Now this is based on the two hour duration specifications as provided by Tesla. And we can take a look at this particular image and it shows you what some of the specifications for mega packs look like uh, as they are provided by uh, Tesla. Now, as you can see by this uh, blow up of this particular section, uh, we're looking at the standard system specifications, particularly the two hour uh, section. And this is what uh, was used in the article by uh, Drive Tesla Canada in that release of the installation of this Megapack site. So I'm going to be using this to be consistent with the discussion for the Giga Texas Megapack site. But as you can see, it has for the two hour uh, standard system, it's up to 1.264. Uh, megawatts or about 2.5 megawatt hours of energy availability and it's scalable in increments of 84.3 kilowatts or 168.6 kilowatt hours per megapack. Okay, so I can hear you now. You say the Angleton installation is very impressive, but frankly, we need more power. Is there any way that we can do that? Uh, and if you take into consideration some of the power problems that Texas has had over the last couple of years, not only would this be important for grid stabilization, but also think about Giga Texas and its energy needs as well. Well, as you can see by this article from Electric on the left-hand side of the screen, filed in September of 2022, the answer is yes, Tesla doesn't stand still and they've made some significant progress on the mega packs and have greatly increased the energy capacity of each of the mega packs since the Angleton site was installed. And this article on the right from Tasmania talks about the Megapack XL and it uses LFP which is lithium iron phosphate batteries and they have 50% overall more power than the Megapacks that were just used last year for the Angleton site. So very impressive to see how quickly Tesla is adapting and improving their capabilities. So now that we have a good comparison in which we can take a look at Giga Texas and see just how impressive this particular installation will be, let's return back to the source documents and just remind you that here at Giga Texas, there will be 68 megapacks versus the 81 at Angleton, but these are rated at two megawatts each. 
So on the upper left-hand side of the screen, you can see that with those 60 Eight Tesla mega packs at two megawatts each, as we discussed. That's about 131 megawatts capacity or about 262 megawatt hours of power consumption capability. Again, this is based on that two hour duration specifications to keep things uh, apples to apples in this particular comparison. So let's do a side by side comparison of the numbers and see how Giga Texas compares to the Angleton site. Now, Angleton uses the older 1.25 megawatt megapacks, while Giga Texas uses the newer, approximately 2 megawatt megapacks. And this is that two hour duration specifications. You can see here the image in the center. This is the specifications that were originally released by Tesla for the original megapacks. And you can see again, highlighted in red, what those numbers look like. The numbers on the right is the upgraded megapack numbers that you can take a look at the tesla.com site. And you can see that there's a 50% increase in the power and energy capability at the two hour duration specification for Giga Texas. So if you take a look at the information in the blue box on the left, you can see that direct comparison. And even though Giga Texas has only got 68 megapacks as compared to the 81 at the Angleton site, the numbers are truly impressive when you consider that with 19% fewer megapacks, they actually have 31% larger overall capacity and power consumption capability here at Giga Texas. And overall, Giga Texas will have about a 262 megawatt hour of power consumption capability in the Megapack system installed here. And I think for a headquarters and for highlighting its new technology, using these upgraded Megapacks in this particular installation is a definitely a great thing for a Tesla to do. And I think it uh, is appropriate to see this here at Giga Texas. Now, one final thing that I want to go over based on the source documents is the timelines that were envisioned when this site was permitted and filed with the Texas Public Utility Commission. Now, you can see in the box in the document on the bottom right that the scheduled initial synchronization date was April 17th of 2023 with the commercial uh, operation date of the 15th of June. I think that what we're seeing is slight delays on this particular timeline. I know that they're working very quickly, but I think that based on this information, we're approximately four weeks behind that original date. So it wouldn't surprise me if we will see the mega pack starting to arrive for installation probably at the early part of June and with the site ready for commercial operations sometime in the early part of July. So these are the things that I will be looking for over the next several months, particularly the arrival hopefully of the mega packs on site soon, probably within the next uh, three to four weeks. Now, as you can imagine, there is a lot more information about mega packs available from Tesla, and it would include some of these graphs and charts and also some of the installation sites around the world that have already been completed and are in commission. I would recommend you take a look at the link at the top of the screen, also the link in the video description, so you can get more information about all of the mega pack capabilities and also some more information about the new XL version that is being produced and shipped from the Lathrop facility in California. I hope that you found this discussion and information helpful and also helps put into context what we're seeing on the construction site here at Giga Texas with the electrical switch shard, the mega pack site, and also what we're seeing on the roof with all of the solar panels being installed. As always, thank you very much for watching and for your support. I very much appreciate it. I hope you have a great day.